I'd like to open the meeting at 7.05. We have transmitting of the Treasury Warrants, number 29, 29A, 30, and 30A. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Motion made by Selectman O'Connell, second by Selectman uh, Samaglia. All those in favor? Unanimous. We have no uh, minutes this evening. Our 7 o'clock appointment, Michael Lombard, President, Frank Chatino, uh, SH&E Manager, and Paul Blinn. Operations Manager, Alco Technology, relative public hearing, relative to the request for a flammable license for property located at 100 Ames Street. So if those gentlemen or representatives in the party in the audience want to come over here to, the, to your right, our left. You want to grab a chair? Go right ahead. Yeah. Might as well be comfortable. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. If you want to give us an update on what you're looking for the board this evening and just uh, tell us what you're looking to do and any questions the board will ask at that right time. Thank okay. you. Um, well, I guess uh, uh, in recent discussions with the fire department, um, uh, they asked us to come down and, and basically reaffirm our flammable liquids license uh, for the property. Uh, Allcoat, um, uh, I guess as a business entity, has been around for about 90 years now. Sure. Uh, they've been on the uh, uh, our site in Wilmington here since 1951. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we make um, textile coatings. Uh, mostly, we sell to uh, industrial uses, but they end up in in products senses, such as uh, tarp coatings, backpacks, sails. Uh, uh, military tents, um, some clothing, uh, labels on uh, uh, the clothing care labels on uh, uh, like t-shirts and things like that, um, some label coatings for consumer packaging. Um, but we do a lot of specialty stuff, customer customer driven business. And um, we have um, the well, currently we have 17 acres. Uh, originally we had 24 acres. I did want to point out that the uh, last year seven acres were sold off, and that's the construction activities that are on our site that's related to the new owner and not us. Mm -hmm. um, we're just uh, intending to continue on our existing operations for flammables, and the chief asked us to come down and reaffirm for our permit. All right, very good. Thank you. I'm very familiar with your company. You have a you know, good reputation in the community. You've been around forever. And you make a great product. Anybody else want to have any input? Unless you have questions, so we can answer specific questions. Right. What I'll do is I'll turn to the town manager, and uh, obviously there's recommendations, I assume, by the fire chief and the uh, representative from the fire department. I'll give it to Jeff. Jeff? Uh, yes, Jeff. Uh, first, I uh, just wanted to confirm that you have the uh, certified mailing cards. Do you have those this evening? We'd, we'd need to, uh, to have those. We have those. Yep. Okay. If you could just present those. Thank you. Uh, okay, the uh, recommendations from the various department heads. Uh, the building inspector, Al Spaulding, indicates, I have reviewed the above-mentioned application, have no outstanding zoning or building code issues. <clears throat> A recommendation from uh, Deputy Fire Chief Rick McClellan, the Wilmington Depar uh, Fire Department approves the application as submitted. And the uh, town clerk, Sharon George, uh, indicates uh, I am attaching the completed application for a new flammable license for Allcoat DBA uh, ATI Realty LLC application. Chief Bradbury has recommended to Allcoat the uh, need for a new license, so there are no issues uh, with respect to outstanding um, uh, outstanding issues with the um, company. Awesome. All right, where this is a public hearing, I will go to the audience. Does anybody out there want to speak pertaining to this issue before the board? Once again, it's a public hearing, and once again, no questions, comments from the audience? Very good. Any questions, comments, motions from the board at all pertaining yeah. to this? I'll start over here. I, I do. Uh, my question, uh, there, I have no concerns. Uh, based on the recommendations from the department heads, um, I would certainly be in favor of uh, approving the license. I guess I'm not entirely clear, and I do see the deputy chief is here. What precipitated the 
the reaffirmation of this of this permit tonight specifically has has there been a change in the types of flammables that you're storing or the volume or something or, or I guess I'm, I'm trying to get an, an understanding of what made this necessary I think the uh, when the chief commander visited us uh, probably about a year ago um, the history of the license from 1950 on was somewhat unclear we had some documentation he had documentation based on the files with the company of the previous owners um, so it was some gray areas there was a couple of decades where there was no information so when his his mindset was let's just start from scratch okay. update everything renew it rather than go for an amendment uh, in the last 12 months there's been a subdivision of the property and also a change of ownership so it made sense given a lack of clear history on the volumes and capacity and the change of ownership and all that to redo it start fresh and everything would be nice and clean makes sense so based on the the new information and the new applications and data that was gathered the fire department is considered obviously approves of it so um, that's fine um, issue number two is actually I, I was going to ask a little bit more about what the company does just I think uh, residents me, me included uh, we, we pass or we see these businesses oftentimes, but unless we interact with them directly, it's not known what they do. So I appreciated that piece of information. Uh, the only other question I would have is, um, and, and really summary of 30,000 foot view, some of the chemicals that I saw, you know, I have no idea, I'm not a chemist, um, but they, they're kind of scary names, right? So in terms of storage on the facility uh, or on the site, I have no concerns uh, because we've been assured that there are no concerns, uh, nor do I have any concerns about what happens to them when you're done with them. But can someone give me a, a real cursory, dumb person's view of what happens when you dispose of these chemicals? How does that process work uh, in 2014? Frank, you're probably talking to disposal of the yeah. chemicals. When you're done with them, where do they go? They go off as they go off site as hazardous waste. Okay. They get burned and. Uh, Cement kilns you know, get, get converted into energy. That, that's where all the chemicals end up cool. as, as a waste byproduct. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a whole process associated with how that moves from point A to point B to wherever the, the yeah, disposal facility is. The chemicals are compounded into formulation, sold into product. The byproduct that's left over gets saved, which is classified <coughs> as hazardous waste. Okay. And we dispose of that within 90 days. I see. Okay. Great. No, I appreciate it. I, I think, for me, I just like to ha sort of have that additional affirmation that, you know, we've got a process in place that's yeah. being adhered to. And not that I had any reason to think otherwise, but appreciate hearing that. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before I go to any of the other members, uh, the manager just wanted to jump in because he had some information pertaining to this. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to update the board more fully in terms of the process here. <clears throat> uh, the t uh, chief and the deputy have been going through a process over the last three years uh, to review the flammable licenses uh, of the various uh, entities in town and make sure that they're updated. And so this was uh, part of that process. This is actually the final um, flammables license that is going through that review process. So it's in, in some measure a housekeeping uh, process. Um, in fact, uh, all code has actually reduced the amount of uh, storage capacity uh, that they have uh, by about 100,000 uh, uh, gallons, as I understand it, uh, removed some tanks. Uh, so uh, ultimately, they have to be licensed based upon um, the number of uh, the, the quantity of materials that they can store. And um, so this is, you know, largely a housekeeping measure just to update their uh, records. Thank you, Jeff. Any other members have anything they want to say? All right, uh, all right. It's up to the uh, membership. Any question? Co uh, co oh, Beverly. Can you guys have the names Absolutely. Could you give us your name for the record, please? Uh, Paul Blinn, B L I N N. Uh, Frank Scatino, S C H E T T I N O. Mike Lombard, L O M B A R D. All right, so back to the board. Any questions, comments, or motions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> excuse me, I uh, move that uh, the board grant the request as uh, presented in the agenda. Second. Second. Motion made by Selectman Newhouse, second by Selectman O'Connell. All those in favor? Unanimous. Good luck, and thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Good evening. Mike, can you just sign right
I move into our 715 appointment, Gene Chang, co-chairman, Council for the Arts, relative to overview of the activities of the Council for the Arts. Good evening, how are you? Good evening. I saw you in the hallway. Good, yes, You said hi. you'd be here, very nice. Thank you so much for inviting sure. me. Absolutely. I don't think everybody in the town even knows that we exist, so this is a great opportunity. Well, you'd be surprised. Um, again, my name is Jean Chang, and I'm the co-chair of the Wilmington Council for the Arts. The Wilmington Arts Council is a local component of the Massachusetts Cultural Council, which is a state agency, and they receive an annual appropriation from the state legislature as well as funds from the National Endowment for the Arts. Then they distribute this money into the communities for the purpose of funding cultural projects that will benefit each town to the greatest possible extent. Although all towns throughout Massachusetts have local councils, Wilmington's one of the very few towns that does have a dedicated building. We have been located in the old town hall directly across from the Congregational Church since 1986. The Arts Council is made up of volunteers, currently with five voting members and one ex officio non-voting member. Members can serve for six years, but then take a year off before serving again. This year I became co-chair of the council, along with Linda Malloy being the other co-chair, and Jane Crane, our past chair, is serving in an advisory ex officio capacity. Potential members are interviewed by current members at an introductory meeting, and then a recommendation letter is sent to town officials for an appointment to the council. Since two of our members are ending their terms in April, we're looking to bring on at least two new members. This year we received $4,100 from the state for grants. <clears throat> there are always more requests for grants than we can fund. And it's always a difficult decision because we get so many worthwhile projects presented for consideration. We choose recipients based on our total grant money available as well as trying to select a diverse group of projects. The money is usually divided among 10 to 15 projects each year. The projects included museum passes at the Wilmington Library, painting classes, musical presentations, and plays, among other activities. We fund projects to benefit all ages, from very young children to senior citizens. Some of our more popular grants went to musical programs for seniors, especially those in nursing homes. In addition to grant allocations, our art center is busy throughout the year. We offer painting lessons, both in watercolor and acrylics. Watercolor classes are taught by Louise Anderson, uh, and they've been very popular for years. We recently began offering acrylics, which is taught by Steve Greco, another popular artist with a strong following of students. And we have a beautiful grand piano that's used for recitals throughout the year. Other musical activities are the Middlesex Valley Chorus, you probably heard of them as the Sweet Adelines, or the Stuart Highland Bagpipers who hold rehearsals and concerts at the center. Next month we're having an exhibit of antique sewing machines that will be presented. A major highlight each year is the art show, which is always well attended with artwork exhibited from Wilmington artists as well as those from surrounding towns. The Art Center has purchased several pieces over the years, and they're on display as a permanent collection in the Art Center. This year, we're collaborating with the library to develop new programs that we can work on together. As an example, the library has had two shows, one for art and one for photography, and the Arts Council provided the judges for the shows. We're going to be having ongoing meetings with the library to plan other joint ventures together. The Art Council meets at least four to six times a year, and we continue to research new areas of interest as well as new ways to make the public aware of and interested in what the Council has to offer. Thank you. Right. And believe, you, believe me, we've heard of you. Oh, good. Okay, <laughs> all right. You know, you know, I've heard nothing but positive, and I'm sure, you know, the memberships, good. I mean, you know, you've been around a while, and it's a great organization. And mm -hmm. I drive by there coming home from work late at night, and I see you folks there. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. a lot of folks are, you know, very happy and very entertained what you're doing. Good. And uh, I'd like to open it to the membership. Anybody has anything like to say or questions? I guess, uh, Luke. Mr. Chairman, um, thank you for all that you've done over the years, and I, too, have heard a lot of good things. And um, mm -hmm. the reach out you do with the uh, high school students is, is very cool as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I noticed we have a board to consider. 
uh, item on here that maybe you could take up now? Well, well I had all intentions of doing that. Yep, absolutely. Never mind. Uh, no yeah. mind. No. <laughs> Way ahead of you. <laughs> no. Anybody else have any uh, comments they'd like to make at all? Or? Well, I, go ahead, please, Judy. I just want to say thank you very much for being here. I certainly uh, knew this organization existed. I, I will tell you, I did not realize the breadth and scope of all of the activities that you do in the community and abroad. And I certainly want to applaud you and the other members for taking on uh, those initiatives and bringing those programs to fruition. I really um, am pleased to hear about uh, some of the collaboration with the library and the fact that you have a program, you know, essentially for all ages and all interests and across different um, aspects of the arts. So uh, certainly appreciate you being here tonight and I, there's a need and there's a desire for this to be in the town and I think uh, you're a great example of just all that, that the town has to offer for its people and, and you're making a very valued contribution. So thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank yeah, you. very well said, Judy. I, I'll simply say thank you for coming and I, I'm hopeful that the community watching and listening and hearing your words tonight will participate more and take advantage of the things thank that you're, you. you're doing out there. So. Thank you very thank much. You. All right, thank you. And uh, Lou, if you want to, we can go to just skip down to number six. And if you want to make the uh, motions, sure. Um, I I make the motion that we consider appointing uh, Louise Anderson to the Wilmington Council for the Arts for a term to expire on April 30th, 2016. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Selectman Samaglia, second by Selectman O'Connor. All those in favor? It's unanimous. We also have another one here too, right? Yes. Number six. Uh, Steve Greco. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint Steve Greco. To the Wilmington Council for the Arts for a term to expire April 30th, 2016. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion made by Selectman Newhouse, second by Selectman O'Connell. All those in favor? Unanimous. I think that's it, right? Yes. And we're all set on that. Thank you. Appreciate you coming here tonight. Thank you. All right. Why don't we start at 720, recognition of Michael Scanlon Public Buildings Department. And I know you're kind of a shy guy. You want to, <laughs> you want to come up? Sure. First of all, I asked the town manager to invite you and your family here and also to invite the uh, Hollis family. Are they here this evening? Um, not yet, no. Not yet. You want to just give a second? Maybe, Beverly, thank you. You did a great thing. You did a great thing, guy. You must be Devin. Yes. Take a seat. How are you doing, Devin? How are you? Good. Recognize the gentleman to your left, huh? Yeah. Good man. And the family's here, too? Hi. First of all, I appreciate you being here. And we want to really recognize uh, Mr. Scanlon and what he really did. And a couple of weeks ago, everyone's well aware that evidently at the North Intermediate School, I guess there was a little chaos going on. Some teachers were running. We need to get a nurse. And Mr. Scanlon, I knew your dad. You're like your dad flying under the radar, and you don't look for recognition. You, what you did was you acted before you even thought what you had to do. You ran in there, and this, evidently you thought the gentleman here to your right was sick. And from what I'm understanding, he was in stress. Yeah. And you uh, saved this little boy's life after doing the Heimlich maneuver. And uh, Devin, what do you think of this boy, this gentleman here? <laughs> yeah. supposed to answer. I don't want to say too much, but you know the town, and I'm going to give out a citation in a moment. But the town wants to really recognize what you did. You're a hero, and I know you want to downplay it. And I know it by reading you have. You are a hero. You saved this young boy's life, and I have young ch children. We all have young kids at one time in our lives, right. and he is a hero. And Devin. Is there anything you would like to say tonight? I'm very glad that he saved my life. He did. And not only we're we glad, your folks are very happy and glad. And your, is that your sister? Hi, how are you? What's your name? Don't be shy. It's okay. <laughs> Don't be shy. You know? And Mr. Scanlon, I'll leave it to you right now. Thank you. Anything you would like to say? I mean... I know you don't want to say too much. But I'm, just, I'm just glad that it worked out the way it did, and uh, he's still still around, and I see him every day, and say hi to him, and, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
very exciting, very exciting. And, it uh, could have turned out way, you know, it could have turned out way worse than it did. It, it could have turned out way worse than it tragedy, did. And, you know? and you did, you were, you know, doing your job. And I'll tell you, town employees, they do a fantastic job. And from what I understand, your prior, prior employer, also you learned how, I assume, the anti-choke, the high maneuver. Yeah. That's what you learned. It was actually the, the guys that were up before us, uh, all coat. Yeah. Those are Afian Swans, wow. and those are I learned it from. That's amazing, wow. totally amazing. And uh, you're a hero, and we do have a citation that I would like to read in, into the record, and I'll come over there and bring the citation. But once again, the parents, uh, would you, do you have anything you would love to say at all? Thank you very much, because he's my only grandson. I Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks. I have to do the one for my daughter, and that was enough. Yeah. Don't get a cry. Don't get a cry. Just the thought of him not coming home. I know. Right. Come on over here. I just want to recognize you if you want evidence. I see. Your mother's here, the former Madam Clerk. Yes, I am. Proud mom. I just want to read the citation. It says here, Town of Wilmington, Certificate of Recognition. May it be known that this certificate has been presented to Michael K. Scanlon in recognition of his life-saving actions on, my, on Monday, January 13, 2014. And it's presented by the Board of Selectmen here on the 27th day of January. So, uh... Ooh. I just, uh, I think the the chairman has really uh, said it all uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the job that Mr. Scanlon did. Um, but, it, you know, to me, I think it's important to point out to folks uh, that there's a reason why we do this, and that's because, uh, you know, people are deserving of recognition. Um, I think it helps us to focus on what's important. And... <clears throat> You know, recently uh, there was a football game, and I, I'm a I'm a big football fan. But you listen to this donkey after a football game uh, talk about <clears throat> this game that he just played, and it just makes you appreciate um, really how we misplace our admiration. <clears throat> so uh, this is the kind of stuff that that uh, helps you bring that into focus. I agree with uh, what Mr. Shampoo just said. Yes. Newhouse, I'm sorry. Well, I know you're going to say something on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were put in a position where you had to act, and you did it. And I think we'd all love to say, well, if I was there, I would have done the same thing. But you don't know that unless you were there and you, and you did what you had to do. So my hat's off to you to, for, for reacting the right way and saving a young boy's life. So thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you and to acknowledge you both. I mean, I think what you did was truly heroic and the fact that you reacted in that situation and and saved Devin's life is certainly uh, you have all of our respect and admiration and eternal gratitude and to you Devin I know it was a scary time for you and um, but what's important is is that you're okay you will be okay and there's a bright future you got a beautiful smile you got a lot of fun exciting mm -hmm. things ahead of you and you're gonna have a great life and your family's here to celebrate and Mr. Scanlon's family's here to celebrate and the community's all behind you to celebrate the fact that you came through this. So um, it's gonna be a great rest of the school year for you and you're gonna be able to learn from this and put it behind you in small bites and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and on to all the, all the wonderful things that kids get to do. So thank you both of you for being here and it's nice that your mom and family and, and Devin's family are here to celebrate this as well. So uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to not take away from the spirit of this recognition, but I'd like to make a comment before we close this topic for the evening. Thank you. 
I'll briefly have something to say. Um, I want to shake both your hands, but specifically, you're a hero not just because you saved this young man's life, but because of the way you comport yourself, the way you're carrying yourself since that event and even tonight. Right. You're, you're re the reluctant hero, and to what, Mike, to what Mike Newhouse said, you know, you're not walking around patting yourself on the back saying, look what I did. You just did what you had to do, and now go about your business. And I really, that, I respect you all the more because of that. So thank you very much for being that kind of a hero. And Devin? Boy. <laughs> as Judy said, small bites. Judy, you wanted to say something or that I can wanted to you know give a couple of minutes just to kind of separate from the spirit of um, this because I don't want to take away from the celebratory fact of life and all of that but I wanted to ask a question through the chair to uh, the town manager if we could just have a brief discussion um, and make a general inquiry if um, you know from this if there's any best practices that maybe we could adopt as a community moving forward whether it's on the town side or the school side or a combination of the two uh, that maybe we could see you know I know that Shelley Newhouse has done a lot from the Board of Health perspective, but maybe there could be a voluntary uh, training program or an enhancement of what we might have such that every employee of the town and potentially through public schools may have an opportunity uh, to, on a voluntary basis, uh, be trained in life-saving measures so that we have a footprint across every building and every town, uh, you know, structure that we can uh, you know, be called upon as a good Samaritan potentially to save a life. Uh, hopefully we never have to do it, but can we explore that option as a community oh, further? Yeah, definitely. In fact, uh, I've had some conversations with George Hooper, the uh, public buildings superintendent, about uh, setting up a, a program where we would offer uh, on a voluntary basis uh, instruction in the Heimlich and possibly some uh, basic first aid. So that is something that we're going to be looking into. And um, my expectation is that we would look to do it over the summer when it's a little bit uh, less uh, hectic and, and make that available to all the uh, custodial and building staff that are interested. Okay, thank you. I didn't want to take away from this, but I wanted to see where we could maybe go in the future um, as a result of this uh, this instance. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank the Scanlon family and the Hollis family for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a great night now. Take care. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, 7.30 appointment, Mario Marchese, Worship Master Friendship Lodge, AF and A&M, Relative Overview of Activities of the Wilmington Masonic Lodge. Ms. Marchese, good evening. Grab a seat. Come on up. Yeah, come on up, Jess. Have a chair. <laughs> Sounds like a lot more fun out there than in here. Yeah, exactly. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So, uh... I could Jim. want to just identify who you are Absolutely. and the gentleman here for the record. And Absolutely. Yeah, um, I'm, my name is Mario Marchese. I'm presiding master or presiding officer of Friendship Lodge here in Wilmington. Right. Um, to my right here is Jesse Pluff. Um, he's actually um, one, of, uh, one of my senior appointed officers. He uh, has the station of senior deacon in the lodge. Mm -hmm. This is Tom Morang. Um, he's actually one of my other appointed officers. He has a station of junior steward. And this is Mr. Hal Woodbury. He's actually our lodge treasurer. Um, so the reason why we're here tonight, um, just to give a brief introduction about a little bit about Freemasonry, about Friendship Lodge in Wilmington, how long we've been around, and we've actually been around for over 100 years. So uh, with that, I just want to give a brief introduction to everybody what Freemasonry is and how long it's actually been around. Uh, Freemasonry is, is actually the world's oldest and largest fraternity. It's comprised of adult men, 18 years of age or older, of good character from every country, religion, race, age, income, education, and opinion, who believe in a supreme being. Its body of knowledge and system of ethics is based on the belief that each man has a responsibility to improve himself while being devoted to his family, faith, country, and fraternity. 
Freemasonry, sometimes referred to as masonry, enhances and shrinks the character of the individual man by providing opportunities, opportunities for fellowship, charity, education, and leadership based on the three ancient Masonic tenets of brotherly love, relief, and truth. Symbolically, Freemasonry dates back to the days of Solomon and his building of the first temple in Jerusalem. The oldest document that makes reference to Masons is the Regis poem, circa 1425. The illustrious roots of this organization date to when its members were operative Masons who built castles and cathedrals throughout Europe in the Middle Ages. The foundation of the ritual is based on the story of the building of King Solomon's temple. It incorporates metaphors with symbolic meaning from architecture, engineering, masonry, and construction. It uses the signs and words developed by the Masonic guilds as methods of recognition in the language evolved from a number of sources. Freemasonry was first formally organized in 1717 with the formation of the United Grand Lodge of England in the United States in Boston, Massachusetts on July 30th, 1733. Friendship Lodge was instituted on May 22nd, 1901 when 20 mass Masons, residents of Wilmington, met at Hill's Cranberry House in Middlesex Avenue in Wilmington to discuss the formation of the Masonic Lodge. In June of that same year, a petition to form such a lodge was presented to the Grand Lodge of Massachusetts, signed by the following residents of Wilmington, some of whom were very notable in our town history, such as Edwin Haley, Arthur T. Bond, George C. Hill, Caleb S. Harriman, George Ayer, Daniel T. Bazell, William H. Putnam, John T. Wilde, Melvin Taylor, William L. L. Kelly, George H. Woodman, Anthony Mussolino, Everett T. Perry, Edward N. Ames, George A. Hart, Fred A. Ames, George B. George John B. Mack, George Perry, William H. Shepard, George W. Buck, Walter H. Rollins, Joseph Patchett, Francis A. Hamlin, John A. McIntosh, Fred M. Carter, Charles H. Doak, Gilman Hardin, Joseph W. Strong, Charles Nudd, Asia Sheldon, and George Crockett. Friendship Lodge was formally constituted on December 23, 1902. In December on December 31, 1904, the members of Friendship Lodge voted to purchase the Tower Hill House, located at 32 Church Street. And after much renovation, the following year began meeting is now what is called Friendship Lodge on January 17, 1906, and have been doing so ever since. Um, Friendship Lodge has had a long and proud history in the town of Wilmington and still enjoys a membership which primarily lives uh, in the town today. We have been very active in the town and create and still support various community activities such as our health program, or which actually stands for Hospital Equipment and Load Program. Friendship Lodge in coordination with other lodges within our district and also outside of our district um, actually take um, hospital equipment uh, from donations from um, other people and families who, who no longer have the need for it. Um, we take that equipment in, refurbish it, and then give it back out to the general public on a, on a, on a no-fee basis. We just do it because um, it's something that's good for the community. It's, it's, it's a high demand with a high cost of health care, and, and, and it's something that we enjoy doing as well. Um, also here in, in, uh, in Wilmington, Friendship Lodge has a handicap ramp program. It started about 10 years ago with one um, handicap ramp that was donated to the lodge, and from one ramp, we've gone to 13 ramps um, that we have now spread out all throughout Wilmington and the surrounding communities. And again, this is something that we do for um, no fee whatsoever. Um, ramps get donated to us. Again, we take them, refurbish them, and wherever there's a need, someone calls us, and if we have a ramp, we put it out there. Um, again, uh, it's just something that we do as part of the community. Another event we have is called the My Chip Program, uh, which stands for Masonic Youth Child Identification Program. Uh, we do this in partner with the Wilmington Police Department, Fire Department, local dentists, and Nurses Association. And basically what this is, is a program all throughout Massachusetts um, that uh, Massachusetts Masons have um, a, an event where they invite families to bring their children, um, ages you know, from newborns all the way up to age 21, in which we do an um, identification program where we, we fingerprint the children, we take a dental impression, DNA swab, pictures and a video, put everything together into one package, and we hand it over to the families. Nine times out of the ten, the families always ask, well, how much does it cost? We say absolutely nothing. Because, again, this is something that we do as Masons, and we're part of this community and something that we're proud to do. And, and we're very fortunate this community because all the packets that we distribute, we've never actually had to, to need one. But in, in the event that everyone does need it, it's there, it's ready, and, um, and again, we'll, we're willing to do it any time we need to do it. Um, the other thing that we also do is um, we support what's called an angel fund. Uh, in partnership with the Women's and Public Schools, uh, we provide assistance to children and families in need. This could be meaning books, clothing, or even a tank of oil during the middle of the winter. Uh, we do this solely for the benefit of the child and ask that the child or the family um, receive the donation completely anonymously and we seek no recognition in return. 
Um, so basically, we get the word out to, to the nurses at the beginning of the school year and, and ask them if there's ever, ever a child who needs anything, whether it be tuition for, uh, for a field trip, um, you know, have an issue at home, or they need books, or whatever it is, glasses, hearing aid, if they need something, just let us know. If we have the funds available, we immediately cut the check to the school or to the family directly, and, um, and all we ask is that the child gets the benefit and no one ever knows wherever it came from. Again, it's not because we're seeking recognition, it's because this is what we do as, as Masons. Um, the other thing that we sponsor in town is our scholarships. Uh, we give out between two and three scholarships um, every year to graduating seniors uh, to the town of Wilmington. Um, they don't have to necessarily go to the high school, but they have to be uh, a resident of the town of Wilmington. And this year, we're, um, to um, help fund our uh, scholarships, we're actually having a scholarship, month, scholarship night on Monday, March 24th, 24th, excuse me, and I'm going to let uh, Jesse Pluff talk about that for a second. Thank you, Mario. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate this. Uh, as Mario mentioned in his uh, recount of the history of Freemasonry, one of the principal foundations, one of the true cornerstones of, of Freemasonry is charity. So many of the organizations and the efforts that we make within our lodge are, are done with the aim of helping people. Uh, and we're very lucky to be in a community like Wilmington because, as you all know and as you're all familiar with, there seems to be a true spirit of community in this town, and I think the people of Wilmington uh, generally come together and help to support worthy causes. Uh, so this is one of our more public events that we host every year. As Mario mentioned, uh, the scholarship fund directly benefits uh, graduating uh, seniors from the town of Wilmington, and um, it's a way that we can reach out and help the community that supports us and supports our events throughout the year. Uh, so this year, we've actually uh, created a little bit of a new format for our, for our event. Uh, we've partnered with some friends at the Boston Garden who are basically going to uh, help us to have a, a silent auction uh, of some very, very nice sports memorabilia that's part of the, uh, the history of the, of the garden, if you will, and of the local Boston sports teams. Uh, so with that affiliation and with uh, uh, some other friends that we have uh, at the scoreboard, Sports Bar and Grill in Woburn, they're helping us to put together this event. So as Mario mentioned, it's going to be held on Monday night, March 24th at 7 p.m., uh, the tickets are $20 a piece, and that will include uh, a nice spread of appetizers and other things that your doctor and your husband and wife don't want you to eat. Um, and we're also going to have a, a little bit of a watch party that night. Our favorite uh, local black and gold hockey team is going to be taking on their arch nemesis from Montreal. So uh, please come down, uh, support this event. All of the proceeds from this event are going to go directly into our scholarship fund. Uh, tickets are available um, during normal business hours from Designs by Don Florist right across from the train station in Wilmington. Uh, you may see these signs popping up around town. Uh, we are making the rounds so that everybody in the community can find out about this event. There are other ways to get tickets as well, but probably the easiest way for everybody in town is just to stop by and, and see Don. Uh, he has tickets available there. Uh, and we're hoping to raise a significant amount of money. This is an important charity that we uh, work very hard to support every year. Yeah, and everything we do is going to go right back into helping kids in our community. So please come out and support it. Thank you. Um, also, just to let the board know, on, um, on Saturday, April 12th, uh, Friendship Lodge, along with all, all the other Masonic Lodges in Massachusetts, will be sponsoring our spring open house. It goes from 9 to 3 o'clock. And this year, again, Friendship Lodge will be sponsoring a paper shredding truck. Um, again, a free service to the community. The truck will be on site from 9 to 12. And if you have any you know, spring cleaning papers, or, you know, old bank statements, things you want to get rid of, just bring them down to the lodge between 9 and 12, throw them in a big bin. You can watch your paper go up into the truck and get shredded on video, and, and off it goes. Um, it was an event we had last year. It was a great success, and people really enjoyed it. And uh, we decided to bring it back again this year. Um, uh, Again, this is just something, again, we're, we're part of the Wilmington community. We enjoy being here. We've been here for over 100 years, and, and uh, just, which is something we just want to give back. And, um, and the other thing that I'd just like to offer and open up there um, to the entire board of selectmen, including the town manager and Ms. O'Connell, um, I'd like to invite you all to, um, to our next meeting, actually, and join us all for dinner on Wednesday, February 19th. We, uh, we always have a dinner before our meetings. Dinner is at 630, and I'd like the entire board of selectmen and the town manager to be my guests for dinner. And, you actually come down and, and meet the members of the lodge and, and see what we're really all about. Um, again, so if anyone's interested, please let me know, and I'll make sure uh, you get on the dinner list for that night. Can you repeat that date, please? Absolutely. It's Wednesday, February 19th, and dinner is at 6.30. What's for dinner? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, actually, I think it's roasted pork loin this month. So, cool. so um, with that, does anyone have any questions the board? Or? No, no, thank you, Mark. I, I actually do. I mean, sure. I'm going to go 
off track here, but you specifically mentioned me separately, and please don't take offense to this. Is, I'm assuming this is a, I know it's a gentleman's club, so am I going to be like the token woman that's well, going to be well, hold on. Well, first there for of all, the night? Because well, I noticed I was kind of carved out. Well, <laughs> so. the, the reason why I say that, Ms. O'Connell, is, um, is that we're not a club, we're a fraternity. Okay. And yes, um, Blue Lodge Masonry is what's referred to. So I'm crashing to. the party, basically. No, no, it's okay. No, 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 no. You're all crashing the party. <laughs> None of you is a member, so, which is great. Um, so, it, believe it or not, actually in, in uh, Freemason, there actually are um, organizations for women as well. There's an Order of Eastern Star on the, or in the um, Dars of the, of the Nile and so forth. There's Rainbow for Girls and Demolay for Boys. So it's not just for men alone. Okay. And um, so it's also called the Order of Arab Myth for men and women as well. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, so there's I'm, a place for me. I'm sorry? There's a place for me. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, a place for, okay. there's a place for everybody. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Judy, yeah. don't uh, worry. You have five yeah. bodyguards right here. Yeah, no, okay. I'd love to have you all. I'd love to have you all for dinner. And, and again, just, I'm just, I'm just, just give a chance to the it. board to, you know, to understand who we are, you know, what <laughs> yeah. the members are. So, yeah. You know, I'm just giving I, you a hard time. <laughs> I was waiting for that, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I, no, Mari, I know it's a great organization. I know you at the helm are going to do a wonderful job and everything. Any other comments from the board at all? Anybody? Right. <clears throat> I just feel uh, uh, compelled to acknowledge what this board uh, does consistently, and that's with um, organizations like this that, mm -hmm. you know, it's just yet another example of what, what uh, makes Wilmington not only a town but a community, and uh, our gratitude is very sincere, and we appreciate not only being here tonight, but for what you do throughout the year and, and how it benefits uh, the town in general. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well said, the, um, yeah. It's been said on this board, <clears throat> excuse me, many times about the heart of Wilmington and volunteerism, and this is just another example. Um, being a past great night of the Knights of Columbus, I know what you're going through, mm -hmm. and I know how hard it is to raise funds to keep these uh, efforts going forward, so I do hope people support support your efforts. Uh, what was the date on the shredder truck again? Um, the shredding truck is going to be on Saturday. Actually, I can look up the date myself. Uh, Saturday, April 12th from oh. 9 to 3 o'clock. Excuse me. Uh, we're open nine from to 9 to 3, but 9 to 12 is shredding truck. I correct myself on that. Got you. 9 to 3. And um, being a past grand night in a fraternal organization, I always had the applications in the park <laughs> for members to join. And we had a crowd here this evening. I know it's dwindled down, but there may be some gentlemen in the crowd that would like to be a member of the, <laughs> the Mason. That's so, a possibility. But I'm thank you again for, for all you guys are doing. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I'd obviously like to express my gratitude as well. I was just obviously playing with you earlier. Um, I'm aware of at least three of the items that you had indicated in terms of the ramp program and um, the chip program, and I believe you also do a blood drive too yes, as we well. Yes, yeah, we sponsor blood um, So I've heard a lot of wonderful things. My grandfather was a part of the Masons. It's been a big part of my family, so I have a personal connection. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you have a website? Because you've listed a lot of things. Is there a place that people can go? to see a lot of what you've articulated here tonight yes. in case they forget what you said. Absolutely. It's www.friendshiplodge.com. Okay. Thank you. We have a wonderful blog as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It okay. provides information okay. about, about okay. Masons and our lodge in particular. Yeah. What, what, uh, what Mr. Woodbury is referring to is uh, I, uh, on the patch, I uh, often blog about the lodge and about our activities and stuff like that. So if you just go on Wilmington Patch, look up Mario Marquez's okay. blog, and you can see a whole bunch of stuff about, you know, about the lodge and Freemasonry. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, well, I'll be brief. I, I admire um, what you guys, what, what you say you guys are involved in, uh, but you're here for people representing a whole lot of other folks. So I just, I wanted to please extend our admiration, my thanks, my gratitude to your entire organization for the charity, uh, for the, uh, uh, the good works that you do throughout the community, throughout Wilmington, uh, specifically on the ramps and the other give back kind of things that, that you're involved in. Um, you know, family, faith, country, and fraternity. Uh, those are beautiful things. Uh, I, I admire and adhere to commitments to those things as well, also as a past grand knight of the Knights of Columbus. Although my, I was past grand knight fairly recently. Lou was back in the early 70s, wasn't it, Lou? <laughs> 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 uh, nevertheless, thank you very much and, uh, and continued success to you. We'll look forward to hopefully seeing you in the 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you guys uh, for being in. Have a nice night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right, Mr. Manager, moving along, communications. Uh, yes, we have uh, correspondence from uh, the uh, Mass Housing Finance Agency. This is the final report on the Metro at Wilmington Station. <clears throat> you may recall a few months ago uh, there was a draft report uh, that was provided that uh, assessed the uh, financials uh, behind that development. Uh, Carol Hamilton, our planning and conservation 
uh, director reviewed the uh, draft and did not have any issues uh, with the information contained in that uh, draft and, and this is just the final uh, report. Uh, in addition, we have uh, uh, information from the Massachusetts Municipal Association. It's a summary of uh, Governor Patrick's uh, proposed budget for fiscal uh, 2015. Uh, some of the highlights uh, include uh, unrestricted general government aid, which is uh, really the main account for non uh, school related uh, funding is being level funded level funded at 920 million so that's the amount that's essentially carved up between the 351 cities and towns uh, chapter 70 which is the uh, principal uh, account that goes towards supporting schools uh, there is a slight increase there of about 2.3 percent or roughly a hundred million dollars and the expectation is that the minimum uh, aid for uh, will go up by uh, $25 per student. Uh, MMA notes that this would be one of the smallest increases since ed reform back in 1993, but nonetheless it is an increase. Uh, other provisions within the um, governor's uh, budget include special ed circuit breaker, which is uh, slated to be level funded at uh, $252.5 million. Uh, transportation for homeless students is slated to be level funded at $7.4 million. It is noteworthy on this particular account uh, that a couple of years ago the, um, the amount was $11.4 million, but in last year's or this current year's budget it was cut by uh, $4 million. And then uh, level funding of charter school reimbursement uh, and regional school transportation uh, also uh, being level funded. Uh, so those are just some of the highlights of um, the governor's uh, budget. As you know, this is kind of the beginning, really, of the whole uh, budget process at the state level. Ultimately, the uh, House of Representatives and the Senate will then convene their own meetings and uh, begin to uh, develop their own budgets. Uh, we also have a correspondence from uh, Joan Butler from uh, Minuteman Senior Services. Uh, the uh, executive director, Ms. Butler, is uh, encouraging selectmen to participate in the annual March for Meals, which is a monthly or a month-long event uh, sponsored by the Meals on Wheels Association of America and is intended to promote awareness about senior hunger and to tout the value of the senior nutrition program across the country uh, to seek additional volunteers and increase funding uh, in support of their efforts uh, from the business uh, and others in the community. Uh, and that uh, takes care of correspondence. And we had uh, six, we took a vote on seven. What about uh, eight, uh, nine? Well, actually, uh, eight, we do need to mm -hmm. uh, consider this one. Uh, This one is what the is uh, DSM uh, is uh, seeking a, uh, authorization on um, a name change. Uh, just referring to their correspondence uh, to the Board of Selectmen with this notice, we are informing you that on January 1, 2014, our company DSM Neo Resins Inc. will be changing our name. Uh, the name of the new company will be DSM Coding Resins, Inc. All future correspondence related to the regulatory permits, notices, and documents uh, will reference our new name. Uh, we are requesting that our current permit, flammable storage, be changed to reference the new company name of DSM Coatings Resin, Inc. So this would require <coughs> a vote of the Board of Selectmen uh, and then a signature from the Chairman. All right, is there a motion to uh, make the change? I'll move to uh, grant the request of DSM Neo Resins for a name change to be uh, now called DSM Coding Resins Incorporated. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion made by Selectman Shampoo, second by Selectman Newhouse. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. And we need to do number nine as well. Yes. Uh, number nine uh, is the um, board to consider establishing a fee for uh, second-hand uh, dealers. 
Uh, you may recall back in uh, 2011, uh, there was a, a town meeting uh, article to uh, establish a secondhand uh, dealers bylaw, and uh, th that uh, vote uh, prevailed. So, as a, as a consequence of that, uh, the police chief has been uh, working uh, on uh, getting that uh, ready to go. And one of the issues uh, to note is that the Board of Selectmen are the licensing authority and ultimately have to set the fee. Um, just a correspondence from the police chief uh, who happens to be here this evening. The police department has reviewed Article 23 of the inhabitant bylaws uh, specifically regarding the secondhand dealer's application fee required for the license application. Article 23 is silent on the exact fee other than stating it will be set by the Board of Selectmen. The police department recommends the fee uh, be consistent with the $100 fee uh, regarding Article 24 regulation of pawnbrokers. So if, again, if you recall, when the pawnbrokers license, uh, uh, the bylaw was established, the fee was set at 100. Uh, it's intended to cover administrative um, costs associated with implementing the program. And so the recommendation is a $100 fee uh, for this particular uh, um, provision. All right, so it's before the board, and uh, the board has to uh, consider giving this a vote. Is there a motion pertaining to our uh, relative to what the manager is talking about? Uh, I move that the uh, board accept the recommendation outlined by Mr. Holland to establish the license fee for secondhand dealers in accordance with that recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motion made by Selectman Newhouse, second by Selectman O'Connell. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. All right, and uh, Jeff, moving right along, number 10. Uh, number 10 is uh, board to consider uh, designee to serve on the school superintendent search advisory committee. I, uh, talked to, I did talk to Jeff earlier. He did notify me that I guess the board is looking to have five meetings, and they want somebody to attend all five meetings. And Jeff indicated to me he can't make the first meeting. So if there's anybody in the board interested uh, in representing the board, uh, Mr. Newhouse? Uh, you, Want to say I, something? I, I would be, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, one of the things that <clears throat> occurred to me when I uh, reviewed this letter, and I, I guess I'd want to first preface my comment by acknowledging that um, this undertaking is is not a simple one. Um, you know, that the town has, uh, I think, enjoyed a long history of cooperation between the school department side and the municipal side of government. And I think that uh, that spirit of cooperation needs to uh, continue for many years into the future. And, and this process can provide a, a great example of how that's done. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, you know, I want to preface uh, one question that I have about uh, this process and the composition with those comments, because I, I respect the work that the school committee and its subcommittee is doing. but. Um, I would appreciate the opportunity to uh, participate in this, and I also um, think that one of our uh, goals ought to be to see if we can get, you know, a second seat in terms of representing the municipal side of government with with this uh, process. And um, I, I just think that, you know, given the history of cooperation, given the fact that, uh, you know, the town just through the Department of Public Buildings alone uh, allocates a great deal of resources to the operations of the school department um, in no way, shape, or form uh, suggesting that uh, this board or the, the municipal side of government, <clears throat> you know, undermines the, the school committee and its process for a superintendent, especially as it pertains to the, to the educational process but I think in terms of operations it's inescapable that you know the town side of government is a an important part of what happens um, and certainly the manager could speak to it with more specifics than I but uh, I pulled out the Department of Public Buildings budget today uh, and at 4.8 4.9 million dollars a year um, the vast majority of which I would think you know the, the personnel and maintenance goes to its school buildings it's just one example of how the town needs to continue to, to work cooperatively with the school department. So, um, so in any case, I, I, I 
was kind of trying to catch the chairman's eyes when he was just reading this because I feel compelled not only to express an interest but uh, also to make the point that I, I would really um, like to maximize the municipal side of government's participation in this process. Oh, absolutely. I don't have an issue uh, taking a formal vote appointing you as the liaison uh, pertaining to uh, representing the uh, board in the selection of a new superintendent, I believe. Uh, any other questions or comments at all? Or? I think the only comment I would make is that, you know, I everything that Mr. Newhouse is, or Selectman Newhouse is indicating makes sense. Mm -hmm. What I what I don't know, and this is said with respect, is that I'm, I'm, I've seen the memos at a high level as to uh, how many people will be on this committee or this advisory committee, mm -hmm. but I, I don't have a full understanding of the composition of the group, and I was wondering if um, either now or at, at a future time we could get an update as to who is going to be part of this as it stands today so I could understand a little bit more of the framework of um, Mr. Newhouse's comments, Thanks. if I may. Maybe at the next meeting, just give us an update on what you're looking. I mean, I have no issue uh, appointing Mr. Newhouse as the liaison from the Board of Selectmen pertaining to this. It's more for my information yeah, purposes, sure. but I mean, when you say 11, I'm assuming there'll be, uh, you know, the grade level, you know, community parents potentially, and I'm assuming compromised, uh, comprised of other people uh, in the town. I just wanted to get a little bit of insight, if I may. Yeah, it's my understanding that uh, the makeup uh, consists of uh, three uh, parents of students in the system, uh, three teachers, <clears throat> uh, a general government representative, uh, one individual uh, from the uh, school admin or central office, uh, uh, and then one, uh, possibly two uh, individuals from the community at large. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then uh, another person from the, uh, uh, perhaps a school uh, principal. So that, you know, being the case, I just wanted to, you know, reiterate what Mr. Newhouse said in terms of not undermining any sort of school committee or that area of, um, you know, Wilmington daily operations. But uh, certainly when you speak to stakeholders, I think the points that uh, Mr. Newhouse have made are certainly uh, well-founded, and if we, we could get an additional seat, I certainly would uh, support those comments. Yeah, I, if I may, I agree with what Judy just said, because it seems like 11-person um, panel, if you will, uh, it seems a disproportionate amount of, of uh, representation from the municipal side is one. I think that two would be a no-brainer. I mean, the, the, the parents involved in the school committee, all their, uh, the um, the admin personnel, that's great, but I think one representative on that committee would be disproportionate to the amount of time, money, and effort that is put on by the municipal side, including the public public uh, buildings alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly see. admire. Uh, I, I'm glad, Mike, uh, Mr. Newhouse, that you uh, that you're willing to step up into the spot. Uh, your your analytical sort of demeanor I think is going to be ver it will serve that committee very well and will serve the town very well um, so I I'm delighted I think any of us could have certainly done a nice job there but I, I, you have a particular uh, suite of skills and uh, and talents that I think will be well applied in this capacity uh, to your point I, I love the idea of having someone from the buildings side you know you certainly come at it with a municipal sort of government budgetary you know th that side of the the angle you can and, and no one uh, we all know that uh, the superintendent has to be able to balance the, the administration of budgets and finance and how to fund things as well as the curriculum side. And it looks like it's, this committee right now is a little bit slanted to the curriculum slide, to, as, as uh, Lou was just saying. Um, you with your municipal sort of knowledge and your ability to rationalize and, and, and uh, comment on things, but also someone from the from the buildings and grounds side. I think that really has a grasp on the administration of those uh, that side of it would be, uh, I think, uh, make make a ton of sense. And I'm glad you thought of it. So I hope that does come to fruition. All right, thank you. I mean, if there's no objection from the board, I designate Mr. Newhouse to be uh, the liaison from the board of selectmen pertaining to the uh, superintendent search advisory committee. Is that fine? It's fine with me. Is it a vote yeah, or I'll, is it I'll, a point? Thank you. I'll report back in yeah. uh, response to some, some of the questions that have been asked. All right, very good. Thank you.
Is All that right. an appointment by you, the, Mr. Chairman, or is that a, a vote? I just that asked we take? the manager if I need to take a formal vote. He said, as chairman, you can make the appointment. Very so well. I'd be happy to take a formal vote. If no, you no, want I, think, to. I think it's an academic interview. No, 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 no so that, that's why I asked the manager. That's why he gets paid the big bucks to let us know what's happening. <laughs> All right? And uh, uh, moving right along, number 11. Uh, it's number 11, uh, board to consider meeting uh, with the town council uh, for an update on legal services. Uh, if you recall, uh, last year after the renewal of the contract uh, with town council uh, Deutsch Williams, uh, there was a uh, conversation about uh, having a check-in, so to speak, an update uh, on um, how the, uh, uh, the, the cases and how things were proceeding. Uh, I think at this point it would be advisable uh, to do that, and I'm certainly uh, prepared to uh, meet with council uh, to um, go through that update. I think it would be uh, also worthwhile to have uh, perhaps a member or, 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 or even two members uh, to uh, participate in such a meeting. So uh, just bring that before the board for your consideration. I did talk to a manager pertaining to this, and I would have, if there's no objection, I don't have a problem serving. As I, I believe you're right, we should have two members of the Board of Selectmen to sit down with town council because, as you know, the budget's upon us. So if there's anybody interested in serving uh, other than myself, uh, feel free to speak up now. Or if you want to give me a call in the next day or two, if you show an interest, and we'll start setting up appointments that's obviously convenient for all three of us. All right. Any, yeah, we'll mull it over and let you know. How's that? All right, just, just get back to me. If anybody shows an interest, just give me a call. And we'll set up an appointment with the manager. We'll sit down and talk to town council. I learned and in the military. We won't volunteer for nothing. There you go. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, we didn't. Uh, all right. Then we're down to number 12. <laughs> public comments. Any public comments at all? Nothing this evening. All right. Any new business or committee reports? And I'll start with Mr. Shampoo. Well, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'll be as brief as I can be. Um, as uh, most of you know, this past weekend was the uh, Massachusetts Municipal Association annual meeting and conference. Uh, and uh, I had the great pleasure of attending uh, all day Friday, uh, Friday evening, and uh, most uh, all day Saturday as well. Uh, and the great pleasure was that I got to spend a, a lot of quality time with uh, our town manager, Jeff Hall, as well as our assistant town manager, uh, Kendra Amaral. So, um, I, I won't go through uh, a, a, an itinerary of the weekend. It's effectively a series of uh, workshops and breakout symposiums and discussion groups uh, surrounded by a, a trade show, if you will, of uh, uh, providers uh, of municipal services and products that got towns and cities by. Attendees are selectmen, uh, mayors, uh, city councilors, uh, town managers from across the Commonwealth. Uh, and uh, they present, uh, there, there's a whole, uh, a series of different presentations. Um, as Mr. Hull mentioned a few moments ago, the opening session on Friday morning uh, began with uh, a discussion about the governor's proposal, the governor's budget that he had just put through, um, which effectively level funded uh, in spite of the fact that uh, state tax revenues had increased $1.14 billion uh, in, the, in the recent year. And so, uh, uh, Speaker uh, DeLeo um, took the podium and committed uh, that he would work diligently with uh, the House of Representatives and believed that the Senate would do likewise uh, to find ways to increase especially the, uh, the local aid, the uh, uh, unrestricted government aid and chapter, uh, chapter 90 funding. So, um, you know, it, there was a, uh, that was very well received, as you might imagine, by all the attendees. Uh, no one wants to see level funding uh, another year in a row. So. Um, it's a it's a game of uh, ping pong back and forth. The governor lobs down a low ball, and the the state, uh, the Senate, and the House will try for the high ball. And somewhere in the middle, hopefully, we'll uh, we'll find something that uh, that that town managers and boards of selectmen can uh, can can build a budget on for 2015. Um, so that was that on budget stuff. Uh, additional things that occurred um, were the Mass Selectmen Association, which is a sub organization, had a meeting on. Uh, its annual meeting on Saturday morning, uh, early. <laughs> and uh, they have begun the process of doing a number of things, but they've begun a process of creating a formal document, a, a, a guide, if you will, the Massachusetts uh, Handbook for Massachusetts Selectmen, of which Chapter 1 is now done and printed. Uh, and they gave us a little taste and said that they'll be uh, continuing to develop it. Uh, and once it's a, a complete document, it'll be made available to us. But So I took a whole bunch of copies of Chapter 1, and I thought I'd share it with you, uh, my colleagues. Uh, it's interesting reading, believe it or not. <laughs> um, and it codifies and really 
it puts in paper uh, and in written form what we all sort of intuitively know by virtue of having this job. But uh, it's an interesting document, and I'm, in, I'm anxious to see how it materializes and, go, and grows. Mm -hmm. uh, and lastly, I'll just simply say, uh, oh, no, not lastly. One, one thing, really the highlight for me, uh, there was a lot of content uh, and material that came through. Uh, I know that in a future meeting, I forget what date, I'll let uh, Mr. Hull let us know. But um, Wilmington, uh, again, was incredibly uh, uh, well represented by a young man, Joseph Maselli, who won the sixth grade essay contest. And every year the MMA sponsors the sixth grade essay contest. Um, and uh, they get somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 participants, sixth graders from across the Commonwealth. This year it was 2,400 and something that sent in essays. And the subject of the essay was, if I were an elected official in my community, um, I, would I would make a difference by doing dot, dot, dot. And then these sixth graders just write an essay about that. Uh, Joseph Maselli from uh, the Wilmington uh, Middle School, sixth grade, uh, a resident here in town, uh, won the award. And uh, he was there with his entire family, his grandparents, and they uh, invited him up to the podium and he read his, uh, he read his essay, which is remarkable. And uh, I would encourage you when we have him here to take copious notes because he had some great ideas. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to having him here and I want to just convey congratulations to him and the family again. It was a really, it was a marquee, very proud moment for Wilmington and I, I felt very happy to be, uh, to be there with him. Um, and lastly, um, there were uh, the Maya, uh, Mass Interlocal Insurance Association um, had a luncheon on Saturday and they uh, had gifts for the attendees. So I have gifts for you. you as well. So enjoy those with my compliments. And that is all Thank from you. that. Thank you. Very and nice. I invite you to ask any questions there if there's more content from that meeting that you'd like feedback on or, or uh, observations. I'm glad to share it with you offline. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mike. Judy. I just wanted to add, um, I know that the manager will go over some important dates, but I just wanted to add a few things, if I may. Um, the Entile Development Committee will be meeting tomorrow night, uh, January 28th at 6 o'clock here. Uh, we have officially brought on Waterfield into the design process, and uh, we're really feeling very good about the momentum that we're building uh, into this year uh, to get this project further developed and off the ground. Uh, in addition, uh, there's going to be an announcement that's or it's actually been pushed out today uh, to the media outlets that we're going to be having a public workshop uh, for this design um, that's going to take place on Wednesday, February 5th uh, at 6 o'clock at Wilmington High School. So there's going to be uh, a lot of press out there advertising this event. We're really encouraging people in the public to come in uh, to that workshop. Uh, the design firm that we have hired as a town is very skilled in these public workshop sessions. Uh, we've gone through uh, training through a Harvard uh, Institute type program and very, very talented group of people that will be leading this. It will be an hour and a half. It will be at the high school and we certainly want to hear uh, public comments, concerns, thoughts, ideas and what the vision of this recreation area should look like uh, for the future. And, it, we want it to be a land uh, in an area that we can all be proud of as a community. Um, in addition, I was asked by the director of uh, the library, Tina Stewart, to join uh, their strategic planning committee for the Wilmington Library as a member of the Board of Selectmen, and I accepted that invitation, and I'll be starting that uh, Wednesday, January 29th, and there'll be a series of meetings to talk about the vision and future of the library and the type of programs and how they want to further develop uh, within the town of Wilmington. So um, I will have updates on both of those working groups that I'll be a part of and um, I know all of my colleagues are doing their um, respective fair share in their groups and I'll continue to add these in uh, through the chair and through the manager as it makes sense. But a lot of great things going on and a lot of development going on and it's uh, very energizing and exciting as a community that we continue to move forward and just, uh, you know, increase the level of uh, services that we can provide to our residents that they have come to enjoy and, quite frankly, expect. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Anybody else? Nothing. Thank Everybody's you. good. Uh, Jeff, bring us through important dates. <clears throat> important dates. Uh, the Superintendent of the Schools Search Committee <clears throat> meeting, the kickoff meeting, is uh, scheduled for uh, the middle school uh, auditorium on the 7th, uh, ex excuse me, uh, 28th of January at 7 p.m. This meeting is intended to outline the process uh, uh, of the search uh, for a new superintendent. February 2nd, uh, Harden Tavern Open House at, uh, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, February 3rd, the Board of Selectmen's uh, next meeting here at the uh, Town Hall Room 9. 
Uh, this will be my uh, presentation for the FY 2015 budget. Uh, then February 4th is the beginning of the Finance Committee meetings. The first meeting, again, here at, in Room 9, 7 p.m., uh, will be the General Budget Overview, Revenues, and General Government. Also February 4th, uh, T-Ball Rookies registration begins, uh, grades K through 1. Uh, February 6th, Finance Committee meeting, uh, Town Hall, Room 9. Uh, 7 p.m., Planning and Conservation, uh, Building Inspector, Board of Appeals, and the Board of Health. So those budgets will be re reviewed that evening. Uh, February 7th is the last day to submit petition warrant articles for inclusion on the warrant for the annual town meeting, which, as you know, is May 3rd. Uh, then uh, um, on uh, February 9th, it's uh, not uh, actually listed here, but it's a late entry, uh, Middlesex Canal Association is having their winter meeting on Sunday, February 9th at 1 p.m. at the Reardon Room of the Middlesex Canal Visitor Center located on uh, 71 Faulkner Street in Billerica. Um, February 10th is the uh, next Board of Selectmen's meeting here in Room 9. And then February 11th, we have a Finance Committee meeting here in Room 9. Again, this will cover public buildings and Department of Public Works. All right, very good. Before I take a motion to adjourn, if my wife's watching TV, you got to close the restaurant because I need to talk to the town manager, uh, if she's watching. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So we'll motion second. made. Second by Selectman Newhouse. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you and have a nice night.